On Monday, yesterday, we talked about the upper half plane and reviewed the theory of SL2C, its reduction algorithm, its fundamental domain. We all made our universally recognized uh, hand signals as arithmetic geometry by the form coefficients. Uh, then, at the end, in a somewhat rushed way, I started our more general discussion of fundamental domain reduction algorithms, etc., for finite index subgroups of SL2C. So that's what we're going to do today with applications to the homology of modular curves, modular subgroups, etc. Um, you guys remember the definition of a generalized Fairy sequence. I reminded you of the usual Fairy sequence where you list rational numbers between 0 and 1. In this case, I want to consider a more general construction, not the Fairy sequence, but a sequence of rational numbers. Um, I do require this Fairy condition that when you take adjacent ones, that they give you, if you put made a 2 by 2 matrix, it would have determinant minus 1. So this is a BC minus AB condition, uh, if you write it out, um, or you have to reverse the order. Of Either way, be careful about that sign. Um, I label my fairy sequences with uh, either integers, if the integer appears, it has to appear twice, that's going to be a gluing relation, that's why it appears twice, okay? If it's even or odd, that's a white dot or a black dot, that's going to correspond to the two points with stabilizer in the upper half plane, you called them I and omega on Monday, and one of them has a stabilizer of order 3, one of them has a stabilizer of order 2, of course they're going to heckle us uh, continue to, and here, here they are appearing again, one is even or odd, I'll explain where that comes from, appears exactly twice, and now I want to explain to you, um, given the input of a group gamma, you might imagine the group as input, how could it come to you? We could say gamma equals gamma 0n, or gamma 1 of n, that's one way that a group could be given to you. Another way is it could be given to you by some other congruence conditions on the entries of the matrix. Someone else might give you a black box instantiation that says, I'm not going to tell you what the group is. I'm just going to tell you whether or not a 2 by 2 matrix belongs to the group. Okay, so you should allow that as an option as well. Sometimes they're given by weird coset constructions. Sometimes the group theorist or physicist will come to you and you don't even want to know what their description of the group is. You just want to say, can I tell whether or not an element is in the group? Okay, that's the input. So the output is going to be a very simple in a way to the discourses extra data, the cusps, and the labels that say how to glue. Okay? So um, I gave you an example last time where I just want to show you right away what the answer is for PSL2Z. Um, here's our representative fundamental domain from last time. I'm going to do something slightly weird, but uh, it's the right thing to do for this generalization. I'm going to split my fundamental domain in half. And I'm going to take this piece, maybe we'll, we'll do a shading like this. Those of you who are triangle group practitioners will see this um, as a not, not a strange operation. This is really double of a hyperbolic triangle. We need to split it up into the two. And then I'm just going to take this white one and put it down here instead. Okay, so this, this piece comes down here. Um, so the new fundamental domain um, is going to look like this. That's perfectly valid operation, right? I still have a unique representative. Um, and here, this is going to be the black dot for odd. The odd has to do with the order of the stabilizer group is either even or odd. That's the end of that uh, long, possibly long discussion. This is supposed to be in the upper half plane, what do you call it, minus omega squared. If you don't like that, write it on the other side with the omega, okay? Um, and the thing, so what is this point down here? If I perform this operation, I don't want to put a white a dot there. I'll put some, something in. Well, there's infinity up here, right, y'all? And then this, so then what does this thing have to be? It's a zero, right? Okay, so is that clear? Okay, so the fairy symbol, not, I have to prove this to you, but uh, this is uh, what, how these things work. It looks like this, it's minus infinity, zero, plus infinity. And it has <coughs> labels that go, uh, well, let's see, I'm going to do it white. And then, or, or I think I did it yesterday the other way. So there's uh, secretly another dot on this vertical axis, which is called I. Okay, and the way that you're supposed to take this, do you see the relationship between the fairy symbol and the fundamental domain? So you start at negative infinity, which is really infinity. Then you go to zero, and along the way, you label it with a white dot. 
Okay? Then you go from 0 to infinity, and there's this extra operation because of the order, uh, odd order stabilizer that says you don't just draw the geodesic from 0 to infinity, but you draw a, um, a little pit stop along the way at the point of order 3 minus uh, omega squared, and then this thing is now a fundamental domain. Okay, so in general, what's going to happen is we'll have a sequence. Well, maybe I'll do one other example um, so you can see what this looks like. Describe the algorithm. And then maybe, well, let's see how much time we have. The next example I want to do is gamma 2. Actually, I want to do gamma 2 using the algorithm. So maybe I'll uh, describe the algorithm next. Okay, so um, there's one other case uh, that you need to, PSL2Z needs special treatment. That's also why I did it on Monday so that we already feel like it's taken care of. Um, of all of the subgroups of PSL2Z, there is a unique subgroup of index 2 you know this. It's generated by the squares in, in PSL2Z. Um, that uh, has other interpretations that are meaningful. This un there, so there exists a unique subgroup gamma inside. Well, it's necessarily normal then, too. The index 2. Okay, and uh, well, without giving you any further description about this group, here, here's, here's its very simple. And instead of a white dot and a black dot, it's two black dots. Okay, so you might want to work out what the picture looks like, what the generators are after I show you some other applications of this. Um, but I want to assume now that that I have at least one. Uh, at the element 1 minus 1, 1, 0. So the, the two subgroups that don't have this element in it are the ones I've written on the right-hand board, and we, we've treated those separately. Okay, so in the description of this algorithm, there, there are several other cases that you have to, to manage. So this is, this is the one with the simplest description, so I can show you how it works. Um, the first step in the algorithm is you start with the fairy symbol that goes minus infinity, zero, one, infinity, with the things unlabeled. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to try to label. So when we try to label, the label is obtained by, so you pick one of the, un, so this is a, a step that we're going to repeat several times, you pick a, and uh, something that's not yet labeled, okay, so let's take, maybe it's called AI over BI is related to AI plus 1 over BI plus 1. Okay, and we see if the edge, the corresponding edge here, so in the upper half plane, you take, there's the rational number ai over bi. Well, this is called xi. This is called xi plus 1. So you have xi here. You have xi plus 1 somewhere else. You know it's on the right because I'm writing them in increasing order. You draw the ge geodesic in the upper half plane that goes with these two points along the circle at infinity as endpoints. There's a unique such guy. It's got a right angle here. Okay, and you see if this edge can be paired with itself by an element of the group, either even or odd. So you see if the edge can be paired with itself. by an element of the group gamma. What does that mean? That means that 
there is a unique element of SL2Z which maps this edge to itself. And I ask, does that element belong to the group? Okay? So you can work out, once and for all, this explicit two by two matrix. It's given uh, according, it'll have entries, AI, some polynomials in AI, BI, AI plus one, BI plus one. And then that two by two matrix, you can hard code that in if you want to think about it, which is why I won't write this one down. I'll write down the free one because we'll use it for other reasons. And you say, hello matrix, do you belong to the group gamma or not? Okay, that's exactly what we were given by the algorithm. Another way, if it's given by congruence condition, you're just checking like this lower left entry and upper right entry to this little by n, etc. Okay? So it can be paired with itself by an element gamma. Okay, with explicit matrix. Or, so we'll label, okay, I guess I'll just do it with, if so, label even or odd accordingly. And return to step two. That, would, that means now you look for another unlabeled uh, pair, or uh, something that is yet unlabeled. Um, number three. Otherwise, we next uh, let uh, A, J over B, J, and A, J plus one over B, J plus one be another unlabeled. check that the side pairing matrix, so now I have a second side here, okay, I don't know which side it's on actually, I, you could decide, you know, maybe you take the xi and the xj by taking them in order so that you always know that one is on the right side, but now again there is a unique element of SL2z which maps this edge, the edge between the xi and xi plus one to the xj xj plus one, um, and it looks like this. I mean, it's not much of a looker, but none of these things are. I just want you to, well, you can work it out, but uh, this is why I was going to use the document camera, but all right. If I have to, if you have to write it out, I guess I should have to write it out too. You don't have to write down that matrix. You could recover it. You'd ask, what is a, if, if I want to take two points on the real to the other two points, that determines, okay, you'll see. Right? So you check if this guy belongs to the group. And if so, then we're going to label that the, those two edges with the next positive integer that we haven't used yet. Okay? If so, label our two edges next positive integer. So you have to keep a little counter going. Okay. If everything and return to step three. Sorry, step two. Excuse me. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, but if so is if gamma is a big gamma? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. If this is belongs to gamma, check if side pairing matrix gamma belongs to gamma. Just like we did in the previous one. Thank you. Yeah. And it does, it's even? Uh, no, we dealt with the even and odd cases here. This one's called a free case. Oh, okay, right. Right? right. So the free case we label with the so we label free. And we label with the positive with the next positive integer we haven't used yet. Right. But I meant back here, uh, by an element of gamma with the matrix, label it even or odd accordingly. So yep. it's even if it's n? It is even if it, you use, if the element that you get has order 2, and it's odd if it has order 3. Oh, okay, sure. Those are the only possible orders of elements in SL2Z. So 
it will be conjugate to the stabilizer of I or okay. omega. Okay. That makes sense. That's what's happening here. Thank you. You all said the same question. Okay. Did I answer it? Yeah. Good. Okay, what else could go wrong? Well, you might have failed in all your attempts to side pair, and in that case, you just stick the uh, frosh sum in between your AI. So we, we, we took this AI and we're like, okay, dude, do you either pair with yourself or do you pair to somebody else? Okay, if not, you suck, and we're going to split you by putting a frosh sum in between, the median, okay? So if two and three fail, so if not, two or three, I mean, if you got to step four at this point, then the AI has, has not happened. So you split, so you replace in your, you make up, in your theory symbol, you now have the XI, which is AI over BI, and you now make it into a new guy. You have to be careful about your counters here, because it's no longer perhaps scooching things over, so, but then you put the frost on it. Poor frosh. They try so hard. Okay? And the statement is that this algorithm terminates. And when it terminates, it gives you something useful. Okay? So are there any questions about what we did? Maybe I really need to do an example now so you can see what this looks like. Because I've managed to take all of the board space, I'm going to use the document camera with my gamma 2. Okay, which will I will slow down so that you have time to write. Um, but let's see how this works. Can you even read that? Yeah, now you definitely can. Okay, so we're going to go through the algorithm for our example gamma 2 yesterday when I drew you that 0, 1 infinity corn chip. So the algorithm says you start with minus infinity 0, 1 infinity unlabeled. Okay? So the first thing that you do is you take, well let's take our edges in order. So the first edge would be the one from minus infinity to 0. Remember we're writing minus infinity as minus 1 over 0. 0 we're writing as 0 over 1. Notice that the Fairy condition is satisfied. The terminate of that matrix is minus 1 like it's supposed to, or you take the negative of it. Okay, now you ask, what is the pairing element that will take the edge from minus infinity to 0 to itself? That's an element of the upper half plane which preserves the imaginary axis. Like there's a unique such one, and it is given by z goes to minus 1 over z. Think about that. If I take a, i, it now goes to 1 over a, i, right? Okay? So now your question is, hello matrix, do you belong to SL, to my group gamma 2? The answer is no, I don't. Why not? Gamma 2 is the group with the conditions that I'm congruent to the identity, plus or minus the identity, which is only one choice, mod 2, mod 2. Okay? So what, what does the algorithm say to do next? Okay, we failed in the step 2. In the step three, now we say, okay, I try to pair it with another side. Okay? So now I try the side, the next one in line. So the zero over one to the one over one. Okay? This, you plug in all of the numbers that you've seen so far, and you get the matrix one, zero, one, one. That acts on the upper half plane by z goes to z over z plus one. Yeah? Check that that's really sending the edge between minus infinity to 0 to the edge 0 to 1. If so, it better preserve 0. Yep, 0 goes to 0 over 0 plus 1 looks good. Where does infinity go to? Minus infinity? Okay, well that's by uh, taking limits, it goes to 1. Right? Okay, so that, I, but you don't have to check that every time. I'm just doing that so that you believe that this is the right matrix. Um, and you can check that it also, when you plug in, that that's the matrix that you get. Now, what do we do with that matrix? We're in the, the free case. We say, hello, matrix. Do you belong to gamma of 2? The answer is no, you do not. Okay, eventually we're going to have to get something. Okay, so.
So I have a check mark coming up here next. Let's see. So you do the same thing with the last edge. Maybe it's not surprising that you're going to get a transpose there instead. Again, the matrix does not belong to gamma 2. You're starting to get a sense of it. OK. So um, what happens now? We failed in all of those steps. Now we're in the number 4, so we split. OK. So what does the splitting do? The splitting says, um, well, I replace this minus infinity 0, which I was unable to pair with itself or with either of these guys with the Frosch sum. So it's a Frosch sum of the minus 1 over 0 and 0 over 1. Well, apparently it is minus 1. Okay, I believe that. Minus 1 plus 0 over 0 plus 1 is minus 1. Okay, so now I jam minus 1 in there and I repeat the algorithm. Okay, so you take the first guy, which is minus infinity to 1, and to avoid spending any more time, you loop through, you check does it pair with itself. Finally, you get to see that if I take the 1 infinity, I end up with the matrix 1, 2, 0, 1, and I say huzzah. There's a pairing between that edge and that edge by an element called 1, 2, 0, 1, which indeed belongs to gamma of 2. So that's where I succeeded in the free step here with the matrix. And um, what does that mean? Okay, so then I label those with the next positive integer that I haven't used. It's just called 1. You can see that that symbol set doesn't really matter. I just need to number them somehow. Okay, and then I repeat with the next edge. I see, does it pair with itself? Does it pair with the next guy? The answer is it pairs with the next guy with the transpose. Sort of, there's, a, there's some evidence symmetry there, which helps that work out. And then once I have that, I have all things paired. And I now, terminate, I, I now exit out of the algorithm. So you exit out of here if all edges are, are labels. Okay? And what is the result of, is there any questions about how this algorithm works? Is it exciting? I don't know, are you guys algorithms folks? I, 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 I eat the stuff at breakfast. Okay, you can, you can now go and implement this if you want to. I think maybe this afternoon's uh, Sage Magma session will show you how to play around with this. Um, there's an implementation of fairy symbols. Um, it's safe, which is great fun. I think you kind of want to like work out an example yourself by hand. Um, maybe gamma 0 of 11 would be a good one um, if you're looking for one. But maybe you have your favorite groups um, that you want to take a look at and see how so to make sure that the sage output corresponds to your own understanding. That's an important part of using technology, not just taking it on its word. Um, so that's that's the role that that has. Yes. In terms of the even odd three. Uh, yes, that's yeah. Let's let's see what happens when you what. How do you interpret now this very symbol for gamma of two? What information does that? Before you any any other questions about the algorithm? Okay, try it out. It is amazing fun. This assumption that a certain matrix does not belong to gamma is because I broke the symmetry here. Nobody complained. Um, I picked zero one one. It turns out you have to you really should take minus one zero infinity if you don't have this matrix. And then these two are oh, the ones I used over there, the PSL2 and the index 2 were also special. Okay? Um, so how do you draw a fundamental domain given a fairy symbol? The answer is it, it is just like we did earlier, where you, well, I'll show you how it works here. So in this symbol, we have minus, the other two, we end up with the symbol minus infinity, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay? And, the, and it just goes like this. You draw the geodesic between minus infinity and minus 1, vertical line. There's no weirdness with the open dot or the closed dot here, so this will be an easy one to draw. Then you draw the geodesic between minus 1 and 0, and you draw the geodesic between 0 and 1, okay, so you see the, and then infinity. Okay? More than that, the labels on the free edges tell you how to pair the sides. So this one says that this edge is paired with this edge with the label 1. There's so many labels here. Maybe, okay, maybe I could do that in blue or something so you don't. The number 1 means everything. Right, there's 1's here and then there. Yeah, and then the same thing with this edge here. So in the video game metric, when you fly off of this side, of 
course, I'm going to translate you back, and if you fly down here, you're going to pop out up here. The explicit matrix that transforms you from this edge to this edge is the one that we labeled with. So you want to keep track of that matrix that we wrote down so that you not only know that they're paired, but you, want, you know the matrix that accomplishes that. Okay? What happens if we, so this was a nice lucky case where we didn't have any even or odds. What happens if you have an even or odd? Well, if it's an even with the white circle, then you need to put a white circle in the middle here. The side pairing element would, uh, it pairs the side with itself, fixing that, that white dot. Okay? And if you have a black dot, then you have to do this slightly weird operation of, you remember SL2, PSL2Z, where instead of drawing the zero to infinity, we drew a different geodesic. And what we did was we went to omega squared and then up. Okay, so if somebody says there was a black dot, you have to take your, what looks like your, it's supposed to be your edge, map that to zero infinity, replace it with the, this oblong one where you have an extra stabilizer, and then map it back. So it would end up looking something like this. You would draw up something that looks like this with a black dot. Okay, and the position of this dot would be, correspond to, instead of drawing the geodesic zero to infinity, you've drawn this point with extra stabilizer. Okay? I find that to be a little bit annoying, but that's the nature of, of the limiting points. Yeah. Okay, so may all of your fundamental domains be without odd. Take, take, uh, be may all your groups be torsion free. So I have a question about the side pairing stuff. When you're implementing this, how efficient is that? Because it seems pretty efficient when you check all of the side pairs. Yeah. Is it yeah, it's like it'll end up being a big O of n squared okay. as the length of your you can imagine uh, hashing or something is going to help you keep track of that type of stuff. Um, I mean, in the big scheme of things, this is going to be 0.1 seconds in C. So if you get that down to 0 0.05 seconds, I don't know. If you're going to do zillions of that, I mean, you know, any advance is good. But I, I, uh, this is already a pretty, pretty efficient. It's the kind of thing you can do it by hand. But yeah, that's a, that's a good question. You might want to think about. So there, there is a a paper by Kurth and Long, if you want to read the details. I'm not going to prove the, the statements of the algorithm. I, I was going to, and then I wrote down the proof, and it's the kind of thing where if I'm explaining it to you, no, it doesn't make any sense. But if you go through and you see the steps involved, you'll be like, yeah, okay. You, you, know, you know arguments like that? Sometimes they're combinatorial, where unless you sit down and you actually write it out. The, the feel of this is supposed to be like, you look at the, you start with a, fun, a, a piece of the fundamental domain, and you say, am I done yet? Which is are all of the sides glued one to the other? If not, then you're adjoining an extra triangle, um, which is, and you're filling out until you you would uh, you achieve the, the side pairing. So it's sort of like you work within your quotient and you keep going until you see that you've reached around to the other edge, and that's that's the side pairing achieved. That's the general feel of the algorithm. Um, okay. Uh, I wrote down a theorem here. The theory symbol associated to gamma tells us cusp generators, a fundamental domain, and a reduction algorithm. So let me explain to you, that's the holy, what do you split's not trinity, if it's four, it's a quaternary, the holy quaternary, um, of finite subgroups in SL2Z. Have I explained to you the fundamental domain well enough that you see how that works? Okay, maybe we'll even see some pictures this afternoon. God, that would be great. Okay, um, how, what are the cusps? Well, they are just the elements of the theory symbol up to the identification scheme. Okay? So in this example, what are the cusps of gamma of 2? The answer is, well, they're among the elements minus infinity, minus 1, 0, 1, infinity, with the identifications that, well, whatever the sides pairings tell me that are matches. So um, which cusps get identified by elements of gamma of 2? Well, it looks like uh, minus infinity is identified with what else? Is that, did I write that up there? Oh, OK, I wrote it up there. Right, so the quiz is a very short quiz. Apparently, infinity gets mapped to minus infinity by what? It's called the element number 1. Okay, And this accordingly, minus 1 also gets identified with 1. OK, 0, well, I guess it gets identified with itself, but it was already, already knew who it was. Okay? So that means that there are three cusps. You choose which, which of those that you want to have them labeled. Okay? That's, that's, that's it. 
for certain congruent subgroups, there are formulas for the number, I'm in the echo zone. The formula for the number of cusps, um, and actually if it's gamma zero of P, it's always zero in infinity, but you might actually want to be able to read this off of the fairy symbol, and maybe for some other bizarre subgroups that come your way, you don't know what the cusps are, and you'll want to see it in the flesh. Okay, that's how you get them. What about generators for the group? Okay, well it turns out that the generators are the side pairing elements. That's the theory. So after all of this, you made the fairy symbol, you want to keep track of those guys, but those matrices, the ones that either pair with itself or pair one edge to the other, those are generators for the theorem. Okay. If you want, finally, a reduction algorithm, how does a reduction algorithm work? Okay, well now I'm going to ask you, do you remember how it works for PSL2Z? The answer is yes, it was only yesterday. What did we do? We took a point in the fundamental domain, called it C0. 2i is a good choice. Then what do we do? We took an element gamma in the group. We, you know, some matrix that we know satisfies the congruence conditions that we know. And we want to be able to write it in terms of these generators. That's what the reduction algorithm says. We already know it belongs to the group. But apparently, we, we, you know, we want to work with an abstract presentation of the group. Okay? So what did we do for the SL2C? We try to move it back to the fundamental domain. Okay, so we want to get it back. So the theorem is that if you apply the generators, which means you also have to apply their inverses, because they don't really know which side gets mapped to this one. Well, this, this side is mapped to this one by some element of the group, then this side is going to be mapped to this side by the inverse of that element. Okay? So you take the list of the generators, which includes their inverses, and the theorem is at least one of those is going to move you closer. Okay? So I've been talking for a while without writing anything down, so now I really have to. So the theorem, and you just keep applying your set of generators until you map back to the fundamental domain. And once you're there, then you have an element which stabilizes your point with no stabilizer, which means you end up with an identity in the group. Okay. Um, reduction algorithm. Okay, I, I said a bunch of stuff. You guys are probably taking good notes, but I, I will write this down. Generators on the side pair inlets. Reduction theory. Take any Z0 in your fundamental domain. Remember, I'm going to make that happen. Your gamma and gamma. And I want my stabilizer in gamma Z0 to be the identity. As long as you avoid the boundary of a fundamental domain, you're guaranteed to be OK there. In fact, 100% of the time, if you chose a random point, you would succeed, but humans are notoriously bad at choosing random things. Remember the algorithm is you next compute your Z0. With your Z0, you apply your element gamma. You get a point Z1. And the statement is that there exists an element, one of the generators. Let's call these G. This, this, the, this G 